Hello, I have a helper today. Somebody's helping me sitting here underneath. I'm not sure how much help it's going to be, but we'll give it a try. We are going to make a needle case today. So using the skills that we've learned in the last few weeks with our sewing, we are going to um, uh, make ourselves a lovely little needle case. So what do we need to make this? We're going to need some felt, okay, for the background. And the piece of felt is 10 centimetres by six centimetres. So 10 centimetres this way by six centimetres this way. It's, that's just the, what I've chosen. You can absolutely choose a different size. You want a giant needle case or a tinier one, that's fine. That was just the sort of thing that I've chosen. Okay, so that's our piece of pale coloured. It doesn't have to be white, it just needs to be pale coloured. Okay, so that's what's, what we're going to need there. Okay, we're also going to need a little piece of felt for your inner. And you can do that absolutely any colour that you want. And that is eight centimetres by five centimetres. These are my little templates because I've been making kits for lots of people. I wanted them all the same. You don't need that. So eight by five, so it's a smaller one. And that can be absolutely any colour. That is going to hold your needles inside. So anything that you want to do there, that's fine. And you need some uh, material. You can use any kind of material for this. Um, if it's frays, it's worth using the pinking shears on the edges. But if it doesn't, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, a small pattern works well and a floral pattern works well. Um, and this one needs to be eight centimetres by, no it doesn't, yes, eight centimetres by ten centimetres. And then you need to cut the edge off so that you end up with a little two centimetre section there. Okay, so a bigger piece here that you're then going to cut down. I'll just go through that in a minute. So we need our piece of our um, outer felt, our inner felt, our colourful piece of material. You need to close it in some way. If I sent you a kit, you have both a ribbon and a popper, and you need to use one or the other for that. I can show you both of the ones. It doesn't matter whichever way you want to do it. We need some embroidery thread. You can use ordinary thread. The embroidery thread will work. If you want it to be invisible, you can use that. A needle and some tiny pieces of felt, and I mean tiny pieces of felt. Okay, they can be, they're really only gonna have to be this big. Absolutely tiny pieces left over from something. So that's what you've got. I've got my full gamut of scissors today. They're sharp, really good um, in dressmaking scissors. We used to cut the material in the first place. The pinking shears were used to cut the edge if it is a bit fray or just because you want it to look uh, jaggedy on the edge and nice looking like that. And my teeny teeny little embroidery scissors for cutting the bits of felt into the shapes that you want. So those are all the things you need but you know any scissors will actually do, they will just make it look a little bit easier. So I'll just pop these to the side. Nick's just going to adjust himself so that he can sleep down a bit more comfortably on my knee and then we're going to see what we need to do to start with. So first of all we need to get this piece of um, felt and we need to put it on top of our big one and we need to cut along there so that you're happy with the shape. The outer one needs to be a tiny bit bigger or almost exactly the same as the inside so you've got two pieces like that that are more or less the same size if you can see that like that nice and clearly we're going to put that one to one side and we're going to make sure we're happy with the little one so that it will make the right size there don't be afraid to cut it thin so this is what we're going to be doing we're going to be making these little lines of sewing along here so the first thing you need to do, I'll just move that into the shot so that you can see it as well while I'm doing it. So we need our plain piece of felt here, and obviously felt is the same on both sides, which makes it nice and easy. And you need to assemble. Now remember, it's going to be folded in half at some point. So if you fold it in half now, and just remind yourself, remember our finger pressing? Just remind yourself exactly where the half is so you can see. You need to assemble your picture um, in whatever way that you want to do it just make sure you've put it in the right order first and you're happy with your pieces of felt where they're going to be mess them around you might want to cut them a little bit smaller 
or whatever you want and I'm just assembling a, a similar looking one to this one you're going to want your piece of material along the bottom so you might decide I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller actually because I think it's a little big so using my little uh, cute little scissors there we'll cut those out and assemble like that okay so we need to do a running stitch around here in order to put that down and that's what we're going to do first so I've done a simple running stitch all the way through I didn't want a knot on the back so I over sewed a few times on the back there now if you um, that's the simplest way of doing it if you're getting really super confident with your stitching if I hold this close you can see that in, I've done little stitches that way of a, and this time I've used a yellow thread, a light yellow thread on the blue so that it's just making it, it's a little bit neater, it's just a stylistic choice to go round but the um, running stitch works just as well when you're on there and you can see it and that's fine. You can either hide it with exactly the same coloured thread or go around. I've only used the very thin ordinary cotton for that. Okay, so that's what we've got there with our background on and then we're going to assemble our picture again. So I'll just put one of them on now. I've done this lots of times now so I'm happy with where it needs to be. So we're going to get our thread now with our uh, embroidery cotton. Now I'm using two, again, it's stylistic choice. You can do two or one. I have put a knot in this one um, for that and I'm just going in there, right at the bottom, approximately middle. Again, don't worry enormously about making sure that everything's really perfectly accurate. This is supposed to be hand sewing and it's supposed to look like you have done it, so it's your style, whatever you want it to look like. Okay, so we're doing backstitch again, like we did last time. Okay, so we've gone in and down, we're going up, and then we're going to go back into this stitch. So we're making a line, and this is the stem of our tree, or our flower, or whatever you're making that look like. And when you get to this stage, you're just gonna carry on and catch the, the felt in your line of stitching so that you can see that going up. Now, because this is blue, you're not going to see this as well. So I'm just going to show it and then I'm going to flip onto this one so that you can see that the line of stitching just carries on all the way to the top and then stops. And that's what you do with each one, just nice and neatly creating that like this. On this one, I've just created a little V and an extra one at the top just because I thought that looked good. And on the circular one, we get from the edge into the middle and back again. In fact, I'm going to show you that one because that will, that's maybe just a little bit more complicated. So I'm not fastening off, but don't worry about that. That's because I'm just showing you with a demonstration here. So I'm going to come up in the middle of my circle there. And then I'm going to go down, okay? And then I'm going in at the edge of the circle like that. If you go back to the prick and stitch, this is what we did there. You can come round to approximately in between o'clock and quarter past, go around and then back down into the center like that. If you can see if I just hold that up a little bit closer so that you can see it and then when you've gone all the way around you end up with that you can do that however you want I just thought that that looked pretty that looked pretty and this one ended up with a couple of extra little things so you're basically just constructing your picture in different ways while we're on our top down I will just show you a little closer up the picture one where um, it's the same kind of thing. You can see we've added an extra one in there for a different bit of colour. I tried to make those ones look a little bit like stamens coming out and just a little bit more, little bit more detail on that. But other than that, nearly the same. Okay. So now you will have your beautiful picture made on the front and we need to add our backing. 
So get your backing then. So we've got the one here. And now I haven't done that, but just imagine that that's completely created. Now we're going to put this with the right side downwards, okay? And we're going to put this with the right side upwards so it's looking at you and put them on top of each other. Now with this one, I've made it a little bit smaller all the way inside. With this one, I've made it a little bit bigger. So you can see the pinking on the edge. Absolutely doesn't matter, it's up to you. The whole point of this is to cover up the untidy back that you will have from your um, uh, sewing, your hand sewing. That will have looked like that. Now this is the point at which, if you are going to use a ribbon so that you can tie it together in the end, you need to get your ribbon and sandwich it in between so that it's like that. Now, I'm just gonna give you a hint from my one. You need a lot more ribbon either side than you think you need to draw it. So you need to make sure it's lay, laying on there like that. And then you put the felt on top and sew around. And when you're sewing around, you will need to catch the ribbon so that it's not dropping down. So you need to make sure one of the stitches goes through the ribbon. And then when it's closed like that, you can use the ribbon to tie that together. Okay, that's how it will be on the edge. But I'm not going to use a ribbon. Actually, I'm going to use a popper. Okay, so you say you have both in your kit or you can do it either way. So I don't need to worry about that. So I'm gonna put this on here and I'm going to sew all the way around the edge. Now, you can use just an ordinary running stitch again that we've done before. And that's what I've used on this one, just going all the way around. And you can't see because I've used thin white thread all the way, and that looks great. If you want to use back stitch because you're really confident with that, that's fine. If you want to make a feature of it so that you can see it, this is blanket stitch around the edge. And I will show you on a little insert at the end how to do blanket stitch. But you could also use your embroidery cotton to do a running stitch all the way around so that you will see that as well. So that will make it look, so you've got the running stitch going around there like a border, like an outline. If you are not so confident with your stitching, I would use white because it will blend in and you won't see a mistake. If you are confident with your stitching and you want to follow our Sasha Co technique where you're looking at the stitches and they're a feature, then use a darker thread so that you can see it going all the way around. And then when those two are connected together, we're going to need to put our inner part in. So you need to fold it in half so that you've got it looking like that and decide where exactly halfway is. Fold your piece of felt in half as well. Now felt does not hold a, um, a finger press very much. So when you're doing this, you're gonna just need to look, you know, keep your finger attached there so that you can see where it is. Assemble it so that you're happy with where it is in the middle. So it's approximately equal all the way around and then we need to do a line of stitching right down the middle you are not stitching the edges now because what you want is to be able to have it like a little book so it's flopping open here if you can see that close up i have just done a line of back stitch down the middle there and then you can still have that bit flopping up like that so you can see don't go around the edge because otherwise you can't get your needles in and it's not a book at all when you've got to that stage, make sure you can close it. The great thing about using felt is that if you've done this and then you think, oh, that's a bit big, you can just cut it down a little bit. Okay, you can still cut an edge off. You can still go, oh, I'll just snip that because I think it's a bit big. It doesn't fray and it's really forgiving. So now you need to get your popper. Okay, if it's in the kit, it will be on a tiny piece of card like this. And this, if you don't have long nails, it can be a little bit tricky to get these off here. You will have to find somebody with long nails or find something to get it off the piece of card. Your popper has one um, part that with, with the thing sticking out and one sticking in. It doesn't matter which way around you do it, one on each one. And you're going to need to sew that on there. And that one on that side. Just make sure it'll work, that you've got them the right way up before you do it, that you're poppering in properly. And then sew or glue. Oh, that one's just jumped off. I'll never find the other side of that one now, will I? 
<laughs> I'll show you on the one that does have one. So we've got a popper there and a popper there, sewn on or glued on if you're fed up with that. And it will do that and house your needles beautifully. And I say, if you want to get carried away, you can totally turn that into a picture. And this picture has been done. I showed you the picture on the top down one, but it's just using backstitch and a really nice piece of um, uh, material at the bottom to make it just look like a nice picture. And it would make a nice card to do that onto a card. Remember, you can sew on card. It does blunt your needles. So you're gonna need a nice sharp needle to go through. But if you look back at both of the um, prick and stitch and the uh, last one that we did with hand sewing, if you have a look at both of those two, they will go through those techniques, okay? And then after that, your needles are going to be so neat and so beautifully kept that you're going to want to do lots more sewing afterwards. And I've got lots more sewing ideas for us, so that's brilliant with our neatly stored in uh, needles. I'll see you again soon. Bye. So here is blanket stitch. I'm coming up from the bottom and I'm just before, you see I've left the hoop, the loop there? You go inside that and when you pull it, it makes that. Up from the bottom in the same way, so you're ending up with one that's more or less the same. Tuck it through your loop and you will have a blanket stitch like that.